All right, welcome to Dean Bodie Show. Da -da 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 -da. Dean Bodie Show. How's everybody doing? What's going on? Hope everybody's having a good Sunday. DeanBodie.com is the website. The podcast link is on there. Hey, wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, we're on all the platforms. The YouTube channel link is on there. You can see the YouTube channel at Dean Bodie Show, D E A N B O D I Space Show, and it'll pop up. You'll see all the episodes, all the teasers with Bodie in it because Bodie's in all the teasers. We do the selfie mode on that one so we can have her in the shot. She likes to move around a lot, so it's easier said than done. So, zippity doo da, zippity a. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. Zippity da do, zippity da da ba da da. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Do your zippity doo da song. Leave it on the number on the check-in line, 800-878-9698, the Bodhi Hotline. Leave your little zippity doo da on there. We'll share it as a feature in our show. Anything you want to leave on there, we're ready for it. We'll work with it. We'll bounce off of it. Good girl, Bodie. Good, good girl. Good girl, Bodie. She's the best girl in the world, yeah. Man, I'm telling you. We're going pet peeve again a little bit with the paper towel thing, and we're going to get into a little bit of Wi-Fi fake news with the cable company. Oh, we touched base on a couple of these things in the previous episode, but we got to revisit it because we have an update. So, my normal paper towels that I ran out of uh, usually get the bounty because they're the quicker picker-upper, and they started chopping theirs in half. For smaller messes, the regular size for a larger mess. Oh, you can tear one that has four sheets on it and make like a really big mess. It's just a mess. Leave it alone, one size to clean up the mess and done. Okay? You're confusing people. So, they ran out of that one on Amazon. So we had to go with the brawny. This is the first time ever going with the brawny. And guess what brawny did? Oh, here we go. They didn't only chop it down halfway, but they cut it the other way too. So now you can just take a square for a square size mess. Oh! Okay, what's gonna be next? A little bit of a corner, perforated corner. You pull the corner off, put your finger in there, put a rubber band around it, and go looking for little messes and corners. You're turning this into crazy people. One size, done. So that's the paper towel update. Really, it's getting a little bit weird out there in paper towel world. I'll tell you what, we're not going to tell me what to do and slice it down the middle and use a full sheet or a half a sheet or now a little quarter size sheet. Oh no, which way do I go? I'm, you don't even clean up the mess anymore. You're so confused on what size to use. So we have more messes. Okay? Hey, Millie. Yeah? You know those paper towels you got with the weird measurement squares on it? Yeah? Just use the regular size, okay? Uh, uh, okay. So, that being said, I had a little journey about the Wi-Fi thing the other day. And the cable company started messing around. I think they're sending me weird signals from, I don't know, cable space in, the, in somewhere in the stratosphere. Messing around, making my lights go flicker, flicker, and making me think that there's a problem. So I thought the problem was handled. I had an appointment yesterday for them to come out here and give me a new cable at 5 o'clock. No, because I unplugged it, I fixed it on my own, and I left it alone. But guess what happened around 5 o'clock? Lights started flicking on and off again, and the Wi-Fi went out. Oh, I see what you're doing. So... I did the whole one, two, three that I learned from the, uh, the assistant, per the, the, per the cable person that helped me on the phone with the whole steps on how to fix it. Oh, yeah, unplug the modem, take a little plug out of the router. I don't know, count to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I feel like I'm the count on Sesame Street, counting backwards and we're counting forward. So, plug the modem back in, I plugged the router back in, and it did not work this time. And I said, oh no, 
because the UFC fights are on tonight and I don't want to miss Fight Island over there in Abu Dhabi. I was excited. Yo, shout out to the UFC, keeping it going. Anyway, so as the story goes with the fake news Wi-Fi, I decided to try it one more time. Unplug the modem, unplug the router, and we're going to wait longer this time. So we'll walk around, we'll vacuum around the house, and we'll go make a sandwich, we'll eat a little bit of fruit, drink some kind of veggie pro plant-based drink. I don't know, something like this to just kill a little time. Go pet the Bodhi. I don't know, go play around, run around playing with Bodhi's toys and we play our little games too. So, about 10 minutes go by, plug the modem in, let it do its thing, playing nice, nice, I'm giving it a little pep talk, all right? Then I let it go after the lights came on, I let it go a good 10 minutes this time before I plugged in the router. Plugged in the router this time after giving it a little more downtime, Everything started talking again. We're back up. Oh, well, look at that. It looks like I fixed it. And guess what happened? From 5 o'clock all the way through the fights, everything worked perfectly. All the way overnight and all the way up until now. I don't know. We're looking at what? I mean, almost like a 24-hour period with no problems. So don't tell me the cables... Um, erosion and corroded and all of this. Obviously, it's working fine. Don't send buddy a serviceman out here or woman to bring your little device in here and look into whatever and check all the codes and put me on some kind of other list with one of your weird updates that nobody knows about and you're just saying you need to put a new cable. Anyway, done and I'll keep you posted on this, but I'm on to it, okay? Everything's working fine. I don't know. You know, everybody's messing with everybody. What are you going to do? So, that being said, I look at it like this. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a glorious day. It's Bodie and me, and it's sunny outside. Zippity doo da, ba da da da. So, that, let's get a little bit of a hard, a little, not too much of a hard right turn, but a turn. And, when I, back in the one time I ever did babysitting, back when I was a youngster, I don't know, I think I was in, I don't know, late teens, and somebody down the block was going out, as they did, husband and wife wanted a night on the town, and I wanted, they want, asked me if I would babysit their, their young boy. Sure, I could use a few bucks. I forgot what I got paid, but, you know, when you need some cash, you do it. So I went down there, babysit him. He was kind of a cool kid. Until he had to go to the bathroom. And I guess he was in between. I guess he was potty trained, but not quite all the way from A to Z. I didn't get that heads up before they left. So what happened? He goes, Dean. I said, yes. He said, can you wipe my coolie? Oh, wow. First of all. What's a coolie? Second of all, why do you call it that? And third of all, I really don't want to do that. I didn't say all that out loud, but that's what I was thinking on the inside. So I walked over there nicely and I gave him a smile and I was being an adult about it. And you can't let him walk around with all caked up on the toches. It isn't like I needed to consult Elon Musk. So I wiped his coolie freshened him up a little bit, put the, uh, his pants back on, and, um, you know, everything was okay. That was my last babysitting job ever. Not because of that, but it's just not my thing. The most, the greatest thing I got out of doing that, first of all, you feel a little bit more grown up. You did some responsibility, you know, no accidents, whatever. Mom and dad came back home, they had the night out, and you were like, nice going. In their refrigerator, they had a nice big bag of M&Ms. Nothing better than M&Ms out of the fridge. They're cold. They got a little bit more of a bite to them. The chocolate is cold. Oh, man. I went to town on this bag like nobody's business. So it went from almost a full bag to like 
this big. Now, if you're gonna get asked to wipe a coolie, the least that I can you can do is give me all the M&Ms that I want. Hey, it's all about the balance. So that that's kind of how my babysitting story went. Not that bad. Yeah, you take one for the team and you do it. He was a nice kid and we were friends. Great family. What do you, hey, babysitting career, very short one. We're going left now. We're going a little bit on the left here. We're making a turn. We got our blinker on. And I want to talk about me fixing my credit. I'm proud of the way I fixed my credit. Look, when I was married and you got relationships and you're being distracted and you know how you're all in in a relationship and the money is going out hand and fist and you forget about the man in the mirror. You forget about you. So things start to pile up. You sweep things under the rug. This is not good. And over the years, things don't go away. Things don't get better. They get worse. So what do I do? Finally, I get to where I'm by myself. I'm in Texas. It's me and Bodie. And I can focus on cleaning up the credit. So I hire a, um, a firm like uh, Lexington Law. I'll give them a shout out because they really help me. Remove all of the things off my credit. I must have had about 30 something things on there. Little by little, we're chipping away at it. It took about three years to fix it all. They would send in their letters. I would send in my letter along with theirs. We gave a couple of them with the double whammy and the right hook and the left hook, and we got rid of it all. Done. Everything was off. Credit scores went way up. And as far as your, your uh, utilization ratio, hey, keep it under 10%. Now, that's your available credit. Um, compared to how much you're using on your credit cards. You want to keep that down. Little tip, little tip from Dean Bodie. Keep it down. I say under 10%, you're, you're in a good spot. And, you know, that's all. Make your payments on time, of course, and things like that. But let me tell you, the first time that I got the Amex Platinum card, that was a big deal. Not until I was in my 50s, was anybody like that talking to me? Hey, what are you going to do? Now, they won't leave me alone. This credit card, that credit card. But it's something else to keep an eye on. And uh, I don't know, man. That was a, it was a good day when that happened. So if you stay slow and steady and you keep on moving forward, you'll get it done. It's just consistency and staying on top of things. And that's my little credit tip from Dean Bodie. That's all. So, again, one more time for the road. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a glorious day. Plenty of sunshine, it's heading my way. Zippity doo da, zippity a. Oh, let's check in with our sidekick. How about that? But first. She's a good girl, Bodie. She's the best girl in the world. She's a good girl, Bodie. Yeah, she's the best girl in the world. Ho! Oh. DeanBodie.com is the website. We got the links on there for the YouTube channel and the podcast. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get podcasts. And remember, when you see it in the description, we're putting the links. Oh! That's the first time I finally said that. In the description, we put the links. I wasn't always doing that. But you learn from other people as you watch the YouTube how to do this and how to do that, people. They always say that. Now, I put the links in the description. You know, Apple, Spotify, the website, the URLs. So you can start cruising around. Leave your email on the website. We can do a back and forth on that. We did back and forth yesterday with someone struggling with anxiety, depersonalization, derealization. There's people out there that are really... Man, they're wrestling with it big time. And, uh, you know, not everybody's the same on that. And basically, whatever caused you to go into that, depersonalization, derealization, um, whatever combination of things that cause your situation, usually there's alcohol involved or weed or drugs or something like that. And the fear mechanism is always in there too. And... The fight or flight gets locked. The fight or flight mechanism in the body gets locked like a cogwheel and you go into this like dream state and it's uncomfortable like nobody's business. 
And those of you that haven't heard that episode that I did, it was about three years straight, nonstop, 24-7 of looking through a piece of saran wrap. Not fun. And there's a lot of people going through it. And the ones that are saying on YouTube that it's never going to go away, most likely you don't have the nutrition and you're not living a clean life with the food and you're still doing the same things. And yeah, of course it's not going to go away because you keep doing the same things, expecting a different result. Hey, that's the definition of insanity. Cuckoo. But it takes time. You got to stay on it. Don't listen to all the negative people. I'm telling you, it does go away. One, eat clean. The power, most, power, most powerful drug in the world begins with an F and ends with a D, food. Get a good whole food multi-mineral to supplement the food. Two, live your life like you always do. Don't let this thing bother you. You got to keep living your life. Three, do something different, something new. Get yourself out of your comfort zone. Start creating more neurological connections. Do this consistently. Do it for a year and then tell me how things are going. Don't give me this, it ain't going away when you're still woofing down bags of Cheetos all day, eating like, a, a, you know, I don't know, you're, you're, you're living off of Cheetos and Snickers bars and, and guzzling and chasing it down with Diet Coke. Come on, you're poisoning yourself. Of course your body's not going to get better, but it will if you do the right things. That's all. You got to be patient. You can't just do it right things for a couple of days and go, oh, why is it not gone yet? Takes time. Everybody's going to go through their own thing. But don't worry about what caused the combination that caused it, okay, with whatever substance combo and the fear mechanism caused it. Getting out of it is going to take some clean living. You got to do it, man. And if you're not, you got to fix that. So that being said, um, you know, had a back and forth with somebody yesterday, which is stay positive and keep moving down the road. I know it's not fun and uncomfortable. And the more you listen to the negativity, don't do that. You're feeding it too much. You know, and um, I don't recommend that at all. You're going to be fine. Just keep moving forward. But we can go back and forth. Leave your uh, email address on there. And you want to go dean at deanbody.com. We'll help you in any way we can. We're always here. We're coming at you daily because life doesn't come at you weekly and monthly. It comes at you daily. And uh, man, let me tell you. It's getting hot out here in Dallas. We're doing triple digits out here. 101, 102. The UFC fights last night were awesome in Abu Dhabi. People were wearing their masks and everybody in the corner was a whole different vibe. And uh, there was no like um, crowds in the stands or nothing like that. It was really on the down low, but still very exciting. And uh, Dana White, the president of UFC, <laughs> nice going. And he said something very inspiring yesterday. He goes, there's always a solution to every problem. But every time the, the reporters ask him all these hard questions... I don't know. Let's just get through today, you know, and if this happens, we'll figure that out. And if we go here, then we'll have to go there. And if we can't go here, we'll figure out a different way. Now we have Fight Island in Abu Dhabi, and now he wants to go buy a house or a condo out there because everything's closed in Vegas again. The point I'm trying to make is there's a solution to every problem. Same with the anxiety. Same with the depersonalization, derealization. Always, but you got to do the right things. Keep the good people around you and the positive uh, people around you. You don't have time for the negative stuff anymore. There's enough of that going on right now. You know, use your common sense when it comes to the masks and things like that. You don't need to make anybody feel uncomfortable. Keep your immune system strong because we're coming out of this bigger, better, and stronger. And we're going to talk at you tomorrow. Man, let me tell you, this is a good episode. We talked about some good, these good stuff and some heavy stuff and, you know, the zippity doodah song. And remember, remember, we're coming at you daily right? We're coming at you daily. And DeanBody.com is always here. We got the link on there. Leave a five-star um, rating if you could. And a nice review for the podcast would be great. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. You don't want to miss any of these shows because these are real shows. You don't want to miss these. The numbers are going up on a daily. I'm totally blown away. We're so excited over here, Dean Bodie. So, you know, subscribe. Click the like. We like you over here, Dean Bodie. We hope you like us. Have a great day. DeanBodie.com. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.